Greetings fellow countrymen, my name is Arjen Zigumbo. I'm the Member of Parliament for Headcliff Constituency, representing the constituency in the National House of Assembly. Uh, and I do, the, do that deployed by uh, the, my party, uh, the Citizens Coalition for Change. We today are you know, speaking to the nation first with uh, a scourge of land baronism in Headcliff Constituency, which is characterized by illegal land invasions uh, and uh, you know illegal land theft, but most uh, significantly, we are first in the constituency with a problem with particularly three land developers who I now choose to call land barons. Why do I call them land barons? Because uh, they have for years subjected people to unthinkable and livable conditions, violating people's constitutional rights to you know shelter, violating people's constitutional rights to health violating people's constitutional rights to uh, clean and portable water and basically violating all non-environmental rights. How have they managed to achieve this? They've done so by you know, collecting hefty amounts of money in exchange for state land, which they've failed for over two decades to service and failed to you know, uh, you know, ad adhere to the terms and conditions of the various uh, land development agreements entered into by the state. The people of Hetcliff today are faced with unserviced roads, they are faced with uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, stands and uh, residential areas without a proper and functioning sewer and reticulation system, no water reticulation, and even no electricity. And this is in a modern day and in an urban development. So how have we you know, tried to deal with this matter? Uh, recently, we have launched a court uh, process against the said land barons, particularly Nyasha Chikwinya uh, and Pilgrim's Rest properties. We have launched a court process against alpha land developers. We have also launched a uh, court process against divine homes, seeking the court to make declarations of illegality, particularly regarding how these land developers have conducted their business in ethnic constituencies, which has been to the prejudice of the masses of Heathcliff. Over 20,000 residents are affected today as we speak by, you know, uh, lack of water, affected by lack of proper functional road networks, road infrastructure, proper functional water reticulation. We have, in this day and age, people who still, you know, have one well and one Blair toilet on just a small piece of land of almost 300 square meters. And this is all amounting uh, to a health hazard to the number of people who live in that cliff constituency caused by the inefficiencies of the land barons, caused by the corruption of the land barons. Why do I speak of issues of corruption? Because there's been serious collection of money uh, from the residents without delivery of the service which is required. Government owns land. The state, the state owns the land. Who is the state? The public is the state. So this is public property which has been abused by private players who have failed to adhere to the terms of the contracts which they have entered into with the state and with the government. And they have puzzled out to unsuspecting public because we know we have a problem with housing in this country. We know a lot of people require to be, to, to, to be moved to the urban areas. So there's a lot of people migrating from the rural areas wanting to find uh, places they can call home in towns. We know there's a lot of people who have worked part of the middle class and the lower class who have been working in our civil service, who have been working in government, who have been working in our informal economy, trying to raise money to buy a place that they can call their own place. Now they are land in the hands of these land barons who are merciless, merciless in the sense that they want the money, they do not want to deliver the service. So we have said we, can, we will utilize our you know, role as representatives, I will utilize my role. As I promised the people of Redcliffe during my campaign, and I continue to emphasize to the people of Redcliffe today that I will utilize my representative role to ensure that we deal with land baronism in Redcliffe, to ensure that we deal with issues of underdevelopment in the, in the constituency. And to deal with that, we are, also, we are going to engage, because I'm a representative of these people, I'm their member of parliament. So I have a big contract with the people of Redcliffe, and that contract is to ensure that I speak out on their issues. It is to ensure that I speak out on the plight of the people uh, that I represent. And when I speak out, I ensure that we put workable solutions for the problems that they face today, not just to go to parliament and sleep. That's not why I'm there. I'm there to make sure that the voice of the voiceless is heard. 
Ndonzi maicha gaka wekuwe at Cliff Concert ya mutagaburi kwa mumba muswa 13 December 2022. Tika atakandi kwa shumu shibushi sepa nze, tichin zende shu hatisku badara na kapari. Tika bataburi kwa pamba waka bawa ningiriku. Tichingo vapamba pana opera one week waka bawa isama loja hu. Arukuto badara zimba. Pamba pili patiru kugara isusu. Saka isa atisina pekuka. Tukuto ngu... Takutoloja, asisho kutiru wadza ndesho yukuti ndesho yisu supamba pedu, pataka waka indaka waka three rooms, pane mkoti, pane security fence, pane toilet, jese asi takusha ya peku gara, wamuwa ni wakango voko wa waka bandua wa ruku gara pamba, wachi rende skwa mariza chua wachijika istiki tambura watituwane peku gara. What do they do? They take advantage of political transitions and come back and pounce on the unsuspecting and unprotected public. Kasukwere came in. There is news awash, you know, on, 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 on our various streams, which speak to a story where Kasukwere himself, when he was Minister of Local Government, came and advised the people of Redcliffe to stop paying money to the land barons. He actually sang a song, a revolutionary song that, for that matter, and advised people to stop Empowering criminals, and by saying criminals, he meant these land battles. Zinotenda MP Mataura Nyaya Zeland Basare urumende ndere kuchengete zavala Basare urumende ndere kutara mtemo kutitofamba sayi Tinonzi wakusushikana Zinu zwaka omera wano wakawandi Asukune wamo wasinga kute marie warukutambu na shikani Lendi ndere nyika ya Zimbabwe you know, it's as if you are in the rural areas where you have to use your uh, food, uh, you know, to food measures to just get the uh, a proper um, me measurements of a stand. In town, it's unheard of because what must happen is there must be proper, you know, planning, there must be proper surveying, and there must be proper stand, pegging of stands. That allows for the pegging of roads, the pegging of other recreational areas. It has not happened. This, is, this we have not witnessed. So Kasukwere tells people to stop paying. What do they do again? They take advantage of the political transitions in the country. When they take advantage of these political transitions, they come back to the unsuspecting public. They start again demanding money from the society. <laughs> After cooperative, we have some developers. So, some developers, we got to move to some city, move to some border. We are making the payments. So, we are going to put our money to border, put our money to border. So, this year, so we are going to change. We are going to know. We are going to find a way to cope. We are going to change. We are going to border. We are going to border. We are going to border. We are going to office. We are going to offer. We are going to put our phone number on the app. We are going to. Kunoku office. Tika wanomari tuende. Saka na tisina tengo titukuya. Saka this year ndopatika sota rege. Tichidi, tichi waka upa stand itu wanepe kugara. Ndofunga pane about three weeks. Nda tango kuti ndichi waka. Ndri kuwaka kudaiso box rangara shika apa. Saka weku aofa. Waka sonzi koti pa ground pa kuwako. Waka ntifonera. Kansi kwe mimi ma kuwaka. Maria kuwaka muriki wanepi. Mushitaza kuunza mariku nuku office. Ngati no, zirinani kutitiva keto garapa nfini. 
Then ni Maria and Ruba Dracula, to put at Chukupai office. Catching the Sagamufana, we have no office to tell run and got into no yak on a fright. Then before Friday, Friday Maxen, Mam next to Angwaka Band for Nashta, Mania Kuno, Ba Boxer puts Panavacumana Viku off. Sagandras of Scopa and Jeep, the Kawanava Kumana Vadi, Vita Savakaitesh, the Kasumana Raumia. Itself is taken because uh, the scourge of land baronism and the problems and the consequences that we have experienced in this country have become so bare for anyone to see and notice. And uh, because of that, you have seen a sort of shift in government policy. And I will tell you for a fact that we have a matter that we filed with the High Court of Zimbabwe wherein we are highlighting issues of constitutional violations uh, arising from the actions and uh, for arising from the conduct of these land barons. And we uh, stand uh, 2016 and started paying between 2016 up to 2023 now. I was allocated by Pilgrim's Rest Properties and uh, uh, I think it's Nyasha Chikwina and the directors, I don't know much about the directorate of the, the company. But he, after being uh, allocated the, the, the property, um, after seven years, after developing, I uh, did develop a, a, a boy sky bay, a three room boy sky, then there's also a two room boy sky. So after doing the developments and contributing uh, to the uh, property, uh, developers, the rest properties that is pilgrims. We are continuing uh, uh, to uh, paying my financial contributions. At the same time, we were also doing some developments for seven years. Then uh, suddenly, uh, this year in 2023, uh, 6 April to be specific, I was saved with the uh, notice of repossession of one of the properties that is being owned by my wife citing that the property, uh, she cannot have that property because it is against the city bylaws of the city, the city council, which we did some investigations and research. But uh, to our surprise, uh, there are no such bylaws, but uh, to us it was kind of a victimization that we faced. And I myself, I was asked to pay a sum of around 24,700 in a period of 30 days which was a huge, exorbitant uh, kind of uh, financial demand. Uh, their moral obligation, they must become the compass of societal order. So we do believe that the courts are going to exercise uh, judiciously, uh, you know, uh, their, its authority to ensure that it delivers justice for the people of Zimbabwe. At the end of the day, we are litigating for justice. We are not litigating for votes. Yeah, my name is Jeremy Stigome. Yes, I'm the resident leader with Premier Park Resident Association and Development Association. We also face challenges in terms of development. Some who have already paid in full to the developers, but there is no service. In terms of roads, water, sewer, I think it's a big challenge now. It's a rain season. The road is not even accessible. But it seems there's nothing the developers they are doing that is tangible so that you can even convince the, 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 the developers. Even on electric issues, electricity issues, especially on our side, we failed to have the connection from Zesa where they don't have enough papers so that you can be connected from Zesa side. Connected wires, poles, but the connection part of it, the Zesa, they need some three types of papers, the development permit, authority from the council, I think they don't have a valid development permit. So as, as, as now we are stuck on electricity issue.